Hey, it's Evan Brand, functional medicine practitioner and nutritional therapist, talking with you today about the signs of low stomach acid. Contrary to popular belief, 98 plus percent of people who have been told they have too much stomach acid actually have too little stomach acid. If you look at the work of Dr. Jonathan Wright, he's got a book that I'll put up here called Why Stomach Acid is Good for You. He did something called a Heidelberg test, which is where you take a capsule that is able to detect the pH, the stomach acid level, along with a little string, and you have patients swallow that, put it into their stomach, and measure the pH and the acidity of their stomach. And what he found is that after age 20, so this is age 20, this is your stomach acid levels, this axis here is age, this axis here is acid, stomach acid level. After age 20, as you get older and older and older, you basically bottom out in terms of your stomach acid production. Now let's go through some of these symptoms. This could be bloating, belching, gas. I wrote all three of these together because this is typically something that happens after meals. Acne is a big one. I struggled with acne for years. A lot of it was due to infections that I had in the gut which were suppressing my stomach acid levels. Now before we go on, let's talk about why stomach acid is important. One is because it's going to digest your food. When you start chewing, you're smelling and tasting the food, your brain is sending a signal down to your parietal cells in the gut that says, hey, secrete stomach acid. Once that happens, this whole digestive process begins. You start to create pepsin. You start to hit the pancreatic enzyme function. You start to upregulate the gallbladder and start to secrete more bile to digest your fats. All of this stuff is churning and burning in the gut and that's a good thing. Now with these symptoms, these could be causes too. So stress for example is going to be a cause. PPIs, prescription acid blockers or even over-the-counter proton pump inhibitors those are a big cause and a symptom. If somebody's on that, we probably know they're gonna have low stomach acid. If you don't have enough stomach acid, it's like pouring gasoline on a wet fire. It's just not going to do very much. And what happens is you start to have undigested food in the stool, you start to have leaky gut because that undigested food starts to separate those tight junctions in the gut. So then you start picking up things like candida, then you get bacterial overgrowth, then you get parasitic infections, then you start to get autoimmune disease because now the, the undigested food getting into the bloodstream, once there's stress combined with that, then you're attacking the, let's say the thyroid, for example, in Hashimoto's. The body starts to attack itself. You've got fatigue that can happen. So all this adds up. Now, to fix it, we've got to do a couple things, and the order depends on your case, and this is why it's important to work with a functional medicine practitioner that can help guide you through the proper steps, because the order of operations, see, it may be different for you. For me, I had infections. I had H. pylori, which is an infection that actually causes low stomach acid because it kills the parietal cells of the gut. These are the cells that secrete hydrochloric acid. So if you've got this H. pylori bacterial infection that's conventionally treated with antibiotics, very poorly treated by antibiotics, it doesn't work, then you're going to have low stomach acid. Therefore, I had acne, I had heartburn, I had candida, I had fatigue. Luckily, I did not have autoimmunity, belching gas, blood, and probably, probably some of that stress, definitely. Uh, so to fix it, you may be able to just come in and do some apple cider vinegar. Just a shot of that diluted, maybe you can add some lemon and lime and a little bit of stevia to it, make like a homemade digestive tonic, that's what I do. Number two, you've got to get your gut tested. I wrote GI test because you've got to look for infections. If you've got H. pylori, you could take all the apple cider vinegar and enzymes in the world, but if you haven't got to the root cause, which is the infection, you're just going to spin your wheels. So you've got to get tested, and if you show up with anything, you've got to eliminate the pathogens. Then you've got to restore the HCL. You're restoring the HCL by removing the thing that's killing the HCL production, which is the infections, if you have it. Once you're free and clear of infections, you continue to supplement with hydrochloric acid and enzymes and feed the fire. Now, here's the thing you don't want to do, which a lot of people do because people like to try to fix themselves. If you go straight to this step here, which is restore or replace HCL, and you start throwing acid into the picture and you get worse, you could have an ulcer, which could be caused from the pathogens, the H. pylori infection, is the number one cause of stomach ulcers. So I don't suggest you just go out and buy a bunch of enzymes and hydrochloric acid and go straight to step four. And then lastly, we've got heel leaky gut. Leaky gut is one of those things that happens before you end up with these symptoms. We've got to fix it. Now, could you go straight and go buy XYZ 
leaky gut program and is it going to work? Probably not because once again, if you've got infections, if you've got uh, low HCL, you could take all the leaky gut supplements in the world, marshmallow root, slippery elm, chamomile flower, okra extract, zinc carnosine. These are things I all use in my clinic. You can't go straight to that because you've still got to remove the root cause. So this is Evan Brand signing out. I hope this was helpful. If you are concerned about low stomach acid, it's something that can easily be addressed as long as you do it in the right order. Be happy to help you click on screen and I'll talk with you in the next one. Bye-bye.